Well, after what seems like an enormous amount of time, what a pleasure it is to have you here with us in Melbourne, Elena. Since I saw you last, but certainly the time involved in actually writing this piece, I think the original discussions between the Melbourne Youth Orchestra and yourself could have gone back as far as 2017, and the writing itself happened in 2019. That's a long time. Is that a common amount of time between the kernel of an idea and its eventual realisation before the public? It can even happen much longer. I have had um, pieces that took seven years from the first initial conversation to the actual work being premiered. Um, it takes time to gestate a piece. It's, um, it's like a birth. You've got to live with it and you've got to talk to people involved and think about what it could be. Four years don't seem that long, actually. But of course, there were these two years that interrupted the work. Well, that's right, because in fact, the idea for this composition that we were particularly excited about at, at Melbourne Youth Orchestra was that it would be premiered in Vienna at St Stephen's Cathedral, and this was very prestigious for us. We explored that idea with the cathedral in Vienna, and they came back to us and said, well, that's OK, but we do insist that uh, all music performed here has, has a sacred character. So um, not wanting to be deterred, I came to you with an idea that uh, we called the piece Inner Angels um, and I was feeling a little uh, nervous about approaching with this idea and, uh, but you were quite enthusiastic about embracing that challenge. Is that a positive experience for a composer when somebody comes with an idea already or is it uh, something that you have to uh, crunch your gears a little to, to make fit with what you had already in mind? It's a bit of both. Sometimes it, help, it is helpful if somebody suggests a title or suggests a story or concept. And sometimes it's quite a stretch <laughs> and a challenge. And in this case, it was quite a challenge because I don't usually write sacred works. I'm not necessarily in my comfort zone. Um, so I tried to work out how I would work with this subject matter and luckily I stumbled upon a not very well known little short story by Tolstoy um, and it sort of captured my imagination. The gist of the story is a good Samaritan picks up somebody, homeless person on the street, gives him a home, gives him food, uh, shares with him what little he has of his own and that person helps him with his business, which was not thriving before. It was a business of very strange uh, leather boots making. And in the end, we realized that this person, homeless person, was actually a fallen angel. And it was kind of a test for him to be on earth. And so in the end, it's all about love, consideration, compassion for other people. And it's about really um, angel within us. Writing for a youth orchestra, I guess uh, the Melbourne Youth Orchestra, very advanced youth orchestra, but still mostly young musicians. Um, how do you actually come to that from a compositional point of view, given that you're writing for professional orchestras all the time? Do you have a very clear set of modified parameters or is it something you just instinctively work on as you compose? Well, I treat these very talented young musicians as actually professionals. So in a way, the piece is not necessarily simple or easy to play, but I like to make it a little bit more fun for them. And for example, one, not to make them sit around and wait for too long before they play. So I try to give them as few rests as possible. So that was one aim. Um, to give them interesting things to do, for example, they have to blow into the instruments, including violins and cellos, to show that we are in the cold, snowy kind of winter times. Just a few little fun things like that. What I love most about orchestra is colour. So I love changing colour all the time. And that's also because I have quite a, I think, low threshold for boredom. Um, so I like to change things quite a lot. And I always think children are like that too. Maybe they can learn something from this piece, I don't know but um, I, I am conscious of it. So somewhere in the back of my mind, it is, of course, I'm writing for young people, but I'm also writing for people who already are very close to being professional musicians. I think it's nice to keep them interested and the audience, of course. 
Given the title, Inner Angels and St Stephen's in Vienna, I love the fact that the percussion um, uh, array or, or smorgasbord of instruments actually include pots and pans. Oh, of course. Now, uh, <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you actually compose that section in the kitchen? Or? <laughs> If only I could cook, that would be great. Um, since my children were small, I loved when they played with the pots and pans. For some reason, that's always a sound I really love. This kind of junkyard sound. I thought it was just a sound that I felt was appropriate for the piece. But of course, it's not there all the time. There's a lot of different colours. Absolutely. Well, in fact, I had a, um, a sectional rehearsal with just the percussion. I was very, very uh, impressed by their choreography, actually. That, in fact, they have to move quite quickly between instruments sometimes. And um, you've always given them just enough time, but not too much. <laughs> So they've got to really be thinking about not what they're playing, but also what they're playing next. And what they're playing with. Absolutely. Which mallets yes. or beaters or how are they playing? Do they strike? Do they bow? Do they um, rub uh, an instrument? It's fun to watch percussion. That's always my favourite <laughs> thing to watch percussionists in an orchestra. Just to mention other instrumentation in this piece, um, one of the other uh, factors or, or, or aspects of our tour orchestra was that the harpist didn't have a lot to do. So I said to you, would it be possible to make the piece quite a feature for the harp? And you've written a great harp part that's keeping our harp player very, very busy. Do you write for harp often? It sounds like you do, but I'm just curious. Yeah, it's one of my favourite instruments to write for. I'm still not perfect at it. It's one of those instruments where you never get perfect unless you play it. Um, there's always something I haven't thought of and um, it, it, they have to change pedals, you know, there's a footwork involved and uh, it's a fun, amazing instrument. It's, it's angelic and that was, I think, also a reason why you said let's make harp a feature. It was, it's almost a little bit like a mini concerto for harp. having this conversation just before the first rehearsal where you will hear the, the piece for the first time. We've had some rehearsals in advance of this, so um, you've already refer referred to it a little, but uh, is it a, a special moment for a composer, those that half an hour before you hear the mu music you've written sometimes years before for the first time? I always find the first rehearsal for me is the most nervous, than, much more than an actual concert. There's sort of trepidation have I really written it okay? Uh, am I still in the same space? Because I'm not now. Three years ago, I was in a different space as a person. We've all actually made a journey now for the last two years. It's been quite an unusual one and it's been difficult for many people. And so we have all learned something new. Um, but it's fun. It's also exciting to hear a work that you've written. I look at the, on the page and I can only imagine something but when it actually is mm, the sound is made by all these wonderful people there's a sense of ah, gratitude wonder and uh, but also wanting to make it better <laughs> I mean we don't know I mean it could be we, we might change it all this is why rehearsals are so great things can change and my composing mind it goes into all sorts of places and wants to, oh, let's do this. Oh, no, I like that better than what I wrote. That can happen, but we'll see how we go. No, it's good. It will take a tremolo out from the half. So down. Everyone, let's just keep I O40 because I think it's the drop of energy not so good. My, it's my compositional no, no, change. I would say let's just keep it all big. Okay, so for, for cellos, double bass. <laughs> Well, 
Well, all I can say is that uh, I personally, Melbourne Youth Orchestra, all our young musicians are terrifically grateful to you for writing such a wonderful piece. Uh, we've enjoyed the, the work we've done on it so far and we have a lot more to do and then the concert, but it's been a joy and a pleasure and we can only thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you so much for this incredible work you've done until this point and beyond. <laughs>